the chaotic scene that we have seen just a short time ago at Kabul's airport. Afghans scrambling to get out, clinging to the side of a U.S. military plane. And it took only about a week for the Taliban to march across much of Afghanistan and take Kabul. So where are we right now and what is the Biden administration doing uh, as it exits from the country? I want to talk about this now with Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer, who is with us from the North Lawn of the White House. He uh, ha has long time pushed for ending America's so-called forever wars. Uh, John, thank you so much for being with us. Look, I, I know there's a lot, of course, the blame game going on at this point in time, but let's just talk about what we're seeing at this moment. Desperate Afghans there at the airport. We understand from the Pentagon that they're planning to relocate up to 30,000 Afghan special immigrant visa applicants. Can you tell us anything more about what America is doing to help Afghans who put their lives in danger to help America? Uh, thanks, Brianna, uh, for that question. Uh, yes, you, the, the images that we're seeing uh, out of uh, Kabul International Airport this morning are very serious. We are going to be focused uh, throughout the course of the day and, and beyond on ensuring that that airport is safe and secure. You know, these are desperate people. You use the word desperate, and I think that's right. Uh, and, and these are people who uh, quite rightly are, are looking for uh, a way out or a refuge who are caught in a very dangerous situation, and that is exactly why President Biden has ordered uh, the evacuation of uh, thousands of vulnerable Afghans, uh, both people who have applied for special immigrant visas uh, to the United States, uh, as well as others uh, who are vulnerable, activists, uh, uh, women, uh, judges, uh, people who are uh, potentially going to be in the crosshairs uh, going forward that we are going to be flying out of the country. But the prerequisite for that is getting this airport uh, back safe and secure. That is going to be the main uh, line of effort so that these flights, which have already brought, uh, by the way, 2,000 uh, uh, people who worked alongside the United States and their family members uh, to the United States in the last couple of weeks. Getting it back safe and secure. Is it not safe and secure right now? What are your concerns security wise? The concerns, I think, are the images uh, that we've all seen on, on television and other places of people walking around uh, the runway and the tarmac. The United States has uh, the forces that are necessary uh, to bring stability and security to that airport. Uh, I think they have gone a great uh, distance towards doing that since some of those images have aired. There are going to be more forces uh, flowing in throughout the course of today uh, and tomorrow. And we believe we have what's necessary to be able to enable these flights to continue as soon as possible. And that okay. is the most important thing. Okay, so John, what about all the people who are not at the airport? Because it seems like they might be, look, for lack of a better word, right now, screwed. We know that they are holed up in their homes in Kabul. We know that a lot of them are out even in the provinces unable to get to Kabul. What is the U.S. government doing, if anything, to provide safe passage for people to the Kabul airport so that they actually can get out in the numbers that the administration is promising? So the United States has communicated to the Taliban in no uncertain terms that they are not to interfere with the safe passage of Afghans uh, to the airport who are looking uh, to depart uh, the country and people who are pro who we are prioritizing for these flights that I've just described that are going okay, to start uh, John, to bring people out of the country. You. And and just to, to finish this, uh, we've been quite clear to the Taliban that should they interfere uh, with those efforts, they will face severe uh, consequences. And we have the military forces in place to be able to execute that. We are not seeing uh, them interfering at this time with people's ability to get to the airport. And it is going to be very important that that uh, continues going forward. Now. Uh, uh, Brianna, you know uh, as well as I do that the United States is not in a position now and will not be in a position going forward to provide security throughout the city of Kabul and throughout the nation of Afghanistan. We are focused on the airport. We are focused on these priority populations and executing the evacuations that the president has ordered. Where, where is the president? You know, why, why isn't he communicating fulsomely to the American people? The president has been deeply engaged in all of the policy conversations and in this situation as it evolves in real time. We have uh, met with the president and his entire national security team uh, daily and often multiple times a day. That's going to continue uh, again today. Uh, the president has spoken to this issue a number of times in, in recent weeks. He, we expect he has that he not, will speak look, to it again. John, totally different story than a few weeks ago, right? I mean, why isn't he out there now? Kabul fell yesterday. Where is the president? Uh, I mean, again, uh, Brianna, the president has spoken to this extensively, and I expect that he will speak to it again soon. Soon. In the coming days, should we hear something from him today? Do you expect that? It seems like the moment demands that. I I'm not going to get ahead of uh, uh, both decision-making and announcements on this. All I can say at this point is that we expect the president again to address uh, the American people on Afghanistan, and as soon as we have more to say about that, we will. Okay, so this plan to evacuate um, up to 
30,000 people, Americans, as well as Afghans. Um, are, so it sounds like those are just people at the airport. Do you have a handle on the numbers? Are, are there that many people at the airport right now? So, uh, Brianna, that's not just people at the airport. These are people, uh, again, in, in particular categories, people who worked alongside the United States mission over the last two decades, many of whom are in the process of applying uh, for a special immigrant visa program created by Congress uh, to enable people who face additional risks because they supported our, our mission uh, to get out of the country. Uh, we are also going to be uh, seeking to evacuate and have already begun the process of evacuating locally employed uh, staff of our uh, mission in Afghanistan, of our embassy. Uh, as well as, as other Afghans who are particularly vulnerable because of their circumstances. That is going to be the focus, as well as, as you say, American citizens who happen to be present in Afghanistan, of which there is a, a significant number. We are going to be making evacuation flights available uh, to them as well. Okay, but you say th these aren't just people at the airport that you're going to evacuate, but you also say you can't provide safe passage for people to the airport. So then how is it not just people at the airport? We are going to be providing security at the airport, and the people getting on these flights are going to be people who are selected based on these priority sure. categories that we've identified. Okay, but so I asked you, are the 30,000 just people who are those who are holed up at the airport, and, and I guess qualify is what you're saying. But when I asked you if it's just people at the airport, are you trying to say that underneath that category are a number of Afghans and Americans who may not be at the airport? And if so, how do you get them? Uh, so we are asking people in an orderly way when their flight is called. And again, this is not uh, going to be just a, a free-for-all. It can't be for security reasons uh, 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 work that way. When people's flights are, are timed, we are asking them to show up at the airport to be present to get on those flights, not just whoever happens to come to the airport. And we have messaged quite clearly uh, both to applicants and people who might be eligible for these flights as well as uh, publicly that that is the case. This is all going to require, again, establishing a clear uh, security at the airport, and that is the main focus of the effort today. We believe we have the troops in place, the personnel in place to be able to execute that, and that is uh, moving forward in real time and has improved uh, since some of these images aired.